Hey guys, welcome to a new Python tutorial. Today I show you how to get started with Pygame and how to implement the snake game with it. In the next videos, this is going to get even more interesting because we are going to apply deep learning and implement an AI that can play the game for itself. But for now, let's start with the game. So if you are not interested in machine learning or deep learning, then this is completely fine. So this first video here is a standalone video and only involves pure Python and Pygame. So let's start. And before we start, let me show you the final game. So this is contained in one file and then I just have to run this file. So in this case, it's called Python snake game .py. And then this will start up Pygame and here we see our window with the snake game. So now I can collect the food and in the upper left you see the score. And then if I run against the wall, then it ends and we see the final score is five. So yeah, this is what we're going to implement. So let's start. All right, so here I'm in a new directory and now the first thing I want to do is to use a virtual environment. So you can either use virtual env or in this case I'm using conda. So whatever you use is just fine, but I recommend to use a virtual environment. So in this case I create a virtual environment by saying conda create minus n and then a name. So let's call this pygame env. And I also specify the Python version here. So I want Python 3.7. Now this takes a couple of seconds. All right, so this got created. Now we have to activate our environment by saying conda activate and then the name pygame env. And then you see we have the name of this environment here in the front. So this was successful. And now we have to install Pygame. So this is simply by saying pip install Pygame. So notice that I don't use conda install here. So um, pip install is the recommended way here. And now it says successfully install Pygame. And now let's open our editor and we can start implementing our game. So here I already created a new file. And now the first thing I want to do is to say import Pygame and then save this and go back to the terminal. And then let's try this out by just running this file. So python snakegame.py. And if the installation was successful, then this should not produce an error. So yeah, I think this script ran successfully. And now we can um, move on. So now the next thing I want to do is I also want to import random because we, we need this later to place our food randomly. So now the next thing I want to do is to say if name equals equals and then main. So if we run this script as our main process, then what we want to do here is I want to create a snake game by saying game equals snake game. And then what we want to do here is to create our game loop. So this is going to be a while true loop. And here we want to call game dot play step. And this is going to be a function. And then what we want to do here, we want to check if um, we are game over and then break. So break if game over. For now, this is just running endlessly. So and then what we want to do is we want to print the final score. And also at the very end, we have to call pygame quit again. So this is closing all the modules. So yeah, this is what we have to do. And of course we have to implement this class. So we create a class and call this snake game. And this is going to take a init function. So we define a init function which, which gets self and we also give it a width and a 
height. And for now, let's simply store self dot w equals w and self dot h equals h. And then let's also give this some default values. So the width of our screen should be 640 pixels and the height, let's say 480. And now what we want to do here is we want to init the display. Then we want to init the game state and place the food and the initial snake. So let's do this. And of course, we also need a function that is called play step like here. So let's implement this right away here so that we don't forget it. So for now, we just say pass. And now let's um, implement the init function. So the first thing I want to do after importing pygame, um, I want to say pygame.init. So this is needed to initialize all the modules correctly. So the same like at the end, we need pygame quit. At the beginning, we want pygame init. So now we have that. So for now, let's simply um, just save this and let's run our file again to see if everything was correct here. So Python snake game .py. And now we see we are in this endless loop. So that's why it's not quitting. So I just hit um, control C to um, quit the file manually. So this is working and now we are in our game loop with our snake game. So the next thing I want to do is to initialize the display. So for this, we create a display and store it in here. So we say self dot display equals pi game. And then we say pi game dot display dot set mode. And here we need to give it the dimensions. So as a tuple, the size here self dot w and self dot h. So this is our screen. Then we also have to say pygame dot display dot set caption. So we don't have to do this, but it's nice if our screen has a caption. So let's say the caption is snake. And we also need to create a self dot clock to create the or to control the speed of our game. So for this, we say self dot clock equals pi game dot time dot clock. So now we have this. So the next thing we want to do is to initialize our uh, game state. So what we want to do here is we want to place the initial snake, the initial food. And we also want to give it or tell the game the initial direction. So let's start with this. So we say self dot direction equals and here, for example, we could just use a string and for example, R for right, left, up and down. But this might be error prone. So for example, what happens if we have a typo or someone writes right or with a capital R. So for this, I want to show you a nice thing in Python. And this is the enum class. So what we say is we say from enum import enum and then create a class and we call this direction. So class direction and we inherit from this enum and then we define our enum. So our enum we have right, which gets the value one. We get left with the value two, then up equals three and down equals four. So this enum here is a set of symbolic names that are bound to unique values. And these are constants. That's why by convention we use uppercase here. And now what happens is we can only use one of those four values. So we can have right, left, up and down. But we cannot have, for example, down with lowercase or as a string or a number or whatever. 
So it has to be of this type. So we are sure that we use a correct direction. So now that we have this, we um, start with an initial direction of moving to the right. So we say direction dot right. And then we want to initialize our snake. So for this, um, we want to store the position of the head. So we say self dot head equals and what we can do here is so we have to store the coordinates inside of our display. So we start in the middle. So self dot w and self dot h. So we could use just a list here and then um, say list zero equals the width and the other one is the uh, this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate. But again, this is very error prone. So now I show you another nice feature in Python. And for this, I'm going to use the named tuples. So we say from collections import named tuple. So named tuples assign a meaning to each position in a tuple and then they allow for a more readable and more self documenting code. So let me show you what I mean. So down here after our enum class, we define our named tuple and we call this a point and a point is a named tuple that again has the name point. And then the members, so we call this X and then we call this Y and then we can access them with um, our point dot X and point dot Y. So you will, you will see how this looks in a second. So this is basically a lightweight class, but we don't have to implement this whole class thing. We can just create a point object, the same like a class object and then access X and Y. So let's do this. So our self dot head equals and then here we create a point and the point gets the X and the Y coordinates. So for this we use the half of our width and the half of our height. So this is our head. So now let's create the snake and for this we are going to use a list. So and here we want to store three coordinates. So the first one is just the head and then we create another point um, at the same Y coordinate but placed a little bit to the left. So what we can do now is we say self dot head and we can access the X coordinate with just saying self dot head dot dot x because this is a named tuple and then I want to move this a little bit to the left. So but I don't want to just say one. So because our snake should be bigger than just one pixel. So for this, let's create a constant up here and let's call this block size and let's say this should be 20 and then we move our X um, one block size to the left and for the Y we simply say self dot head dot Y. So the same uh, Y coordinate and then we create another point and move this two blocks to the um, left. So minus and then here parentheses two times the block size and the same Y coordinate. So this is our initial snake. Then we also for the game state, we also want to keep track of the score. So we say self dot score equals zero self dot food equals none. And then we initially want to randomly place the food. So for this, I create a helper function and let's call this underscore place food. 
And here we want to define this. So define um, place food and this gets only self. And I do this in a helper function because later I need this code again and I don't want to have duplicate code. So let's initialize this. And for this, let me just copy and paste this in here. So we want to randomly have a coordinate inside this um, inside these dimensions. So for x, we say random a random integer between zero and the width minus um, the block size. And then what I do here is so I want to have multiples of this block size and I can achieve this with this trick. So I divide it by the block size and want to get an integer out of this. And then I multiply it again with this block size. So by this um, we get a random um, positions somewhere in our screen that are multiples of this block size. So now that we have this, um, we simply say self dot food equals and then we create a point out of that with x and y. And then we want to be careful. So we don't want to place the food inside of the snake. So we check this. So we say if self dot food in self dot snake, if this is in this list, then we simply um, do the same again and call this function again recursively. So then again, it's creating two new random variables and tries this again. And if this is not inside of our snake, then we are fine. So yeah, so now we have this. And now um, what we want to do is we want to implement this play step. So this consists of several steps. So first of all, let's um, write some comments. So the first thing we want to do is collect the user input and see what key the user pressed. So then we want to move our snake. Then we want to check if game over and quit if this is the case. Then at, as the fourth step, we want to place new food if we hit the food or just move the snake or here we finalize this move step. So we, you will see this later. Then as a fourth, uh, fifth step, this is important. So here, of course, we want to update the pie game UI and the clock. And then as last step here, we want to return if we are um, game over and we also want to return the score. So we need this here in our game loop. So for now, let's simply um, let's say um, game over game over equals false and self. Um, so we already have the score here. So here we say return and then we return game over and self dot score. So now we have that and then in our game loop here we get this. So we get game over and we also get the score by um, executing this play step. And then here we check if game over equals equals true, then we break. So now we exit this while true loop. And then the only thing I want to do here is print the final score. So let's say print final score and then the score. So now again, let's quickly check if everything is correct and we can run the script. So here we, uh, yeah, we see we get an error and the error is type error named tuple takes two positional arguments, but three were given. 
So yeah, this is important. So what I have here is so I created this names tuple and it only gets two arguments. So the first one is the name of this named tuple, the same as we use here. And then it only takes one more argument. So this has to be only one string um, and all those variables separated by a uh, comma. So this might look strange, but actually this works. And then it can initialize the variables with X and Y. So let's do it like this and then let's run it again. And we see we already have this window. So it actually looks strange here, but this is working. So now again, we are in our um, while true loop. So let's um, hit control C and um, end this for now. So now we want to now we see that this is working and we have to implement this play step. So or let's say let's start with um, drawing the UI and updating the clock so that we can see something. So then we should see the initial snake already. So let's do this. So for this here we say self dot and then update UI. So here we create again a helper function and we also want to update the clock. So we say self dot clock dot tick and then we want to tick with the speed. So this basically um, lets us control the speed, how fast, how fast the frame updates. So let's create another constant up here, speed equals 40. And yeah, so the higher the number, the faster your game is. And then let's implement the update UI function. So define underscore update UI and it gets self. And here we have to implement some Pygame functions. So the first thing we want to do, remember we uh, created our display here and stored this. So now we can say self dot display and then fill. And I want to fill it with black. So for this, let's create some more constants up here. So some colors. So let me copy and paste this in here so that it's faster. So here I create some RGB colors. So and these are tuples. So I want to use white um, red, blue and another blue, which is slightly brighter. And then we have black. So these have to be values between zero and 255. And then we can use them as pie game colors. So now what I want to do here, um, I already said I want to fill the screen with black and now I want to draw the snake. So the order here is important. So we want to do this as first thing and only after that draw the snake. So now we say for point in self dot snake. So we iterate over all the points and then we say pygame dot draw and I want to draw on self dot display and I want to say the color is blue one and then I want to draw a rectangle for the snake. So I say pygame dot rect and then the position and for this, this is very nice. So now we can access this named tuple point dot X and point dot Y. And then the size of this rectangle should be the block size in width and the block size in height. So two times the block size here. So now we have this. So now I want to copy this and paste this again. So I want to draw another rectangle, which is slightly smaller 
in the other color. So here, instead of saying 20, I say just 12 by 12. And as a coordinate, I want to move this a little bit. So I say plus four and plus four. So this is drawing our snake. Then the next thing is to draw the food. So here we do the same thing. So we say pi game and then draw and we draw on self dot display. And let's draw this in red. And here again, a pi game dot rect. And as coordinate, here we can take our food self dot food dot x and self dot food dot y and as size the same block size. So this is our food. Now we also want to draw the score in the upper left. So text equals and for this I have to create a font which I do up here. So um, I say font equals and then here pygame dot font dot and then I, I take I take a font from a file. So for this, if I have a look in this directory, so I already placed this Arial dot ttf file in here. So I take this Arial dot ttf and the font size should be 25. So um, if you don't want to take it from a file, then you can simply use a system font by saying sys font and then the name should be just Arial. Um, this is working the same, but I noticed that this takes much longer when Pygame is starting up. So this is much faster. So I recommend to use a file from the disk so now we have our font created up here and then we have to use it here in our update UI function. So we say text equals font dot render and as a string we say score colon space and then plus and then as a string self dot score. And um, then um, I use two more arguments, true and the color. So don't worry about this argument here. And now we have this text and now we have to put it on the display. So we say self dot display dot blit and then the text and the position. So for this, we just use zero and zero again. Um, so in the upper left and then as last thing we have to call pygame dot display dot flip. So this is actually updating the full display surface to the screen. So this command here is very important. Without this, we don't see the changes. So now we have that and now let's test the code again. And now this should already work. And I have a error in pygame.draw. So this should actually be pygame.draw.rect and the same here dot rect and also dot rect here. So now let's save this and test it again. And now we see we have our initial snake, which is in the middle of our screen and it randomly placed some food here. And we also see our score is zero in the beginning. So yeah, this is very nice. This is working. And now um, what is left to do? So now we have to do all of this. So to collect the user input in Pygame here, um, this is a four loop. So we say for event in pygame dot event dot get. So this gets all the user events that happened um, inside one play step. And then here we check if event dot type equals equals and we can check this if this is pygame dot 
quit. Then what we want to do is we want to call pygame.quit and also call quit to exit our Python program. And if this is not the case, then if event.type equals equals pygame.key down. So if the user pressed a key, then we check if this is um, a arrow key. So we say if event dot key equals equals and then we say pygame dot k underscore left and now we set our direction so we say self dot direction equals direction dot left and then we copy and paste this two times so this one this one this one and here we say l if key event equals pi game k right then our self direction equals direction dot right then here l if our event is key um, up then we use direction up and as last one um, again, here we use a L if pi game dot key down pi game dot key down. Sorry about that down. Then we use direction dot down and be careful to not use just an else here because this would also be the case then for every other key the user pressed. So this should be the down key and then we have the direction and now what we want to do with this information we want to move. So we say self dot move and then um, in this direction self dot direction and we want to insert this new so this will move the head of the snake. And then we want to insert this into our list. So we say self dot snake and then dot insert at the beginning. So insert zero and then the new hat. So self dot hat. So this should update the head. So notice that we don't use append here because we want to have this at the beginning. So now um, let's create this move function. So define underscore move and it gets self and it gets a direction. And now the first thing I want to do is I want to extract the X and the Y coordinate from self dot hat dot X and Y equals self dot hat dot Y. And now I want to check the direction. So if direction equals equals direction dot right. And now again, you might see why this enum is very useful because um, here we are sure that this is one of those directions right left um, up or down. So for example here if we use a string and then we might use right or right in uppercase or just um, an R. So again this is very error prone so that's why we use this enum here and then so we if we check if the direction is right and then we increase our x by the block size and then again we do the same for the other directions so here we say l if direction equals equals direction left then our x is minus equals the block size and then we do the same for the y coordinates. So let's paste it two more times. So L if direction equals equals direction up then our so here we have to be careful. So for direction down we 
increase the y because the it starts at zero in the top and then increases and for direction up we say y minus equals the block size and now we have the new coordinates so now let's create a new hat and self dot hat equals a new point with our new x and y so now we have this and so yeah as i said the move function should update the hat then we insert this the hat in the snake then we check if we are game over so here we want to check two things. So we want to check if we either hit the boundary or if we hit itself, if the snake runs into its itself. So for this, let's create another helper function. Um, first of all, let's grab this game over and put it up here. So first we say game over equals false. And then we check if self dot and then let's create another helper function and call this is collision and it gets only self so if this is the case then we say game over equals true and the same like here we return game over and we return the score so here we immediately return so now let's create this define is collision and it gets self and here um, what we want to do so we check if it hits the boundary and then we check if it hits itself so for the boundary we say we simply have to check the hat so self dot hat dot x is greater than self dot w dot minus the block size and or if self dot hat dot x is smaller than zero then we hit the left or the right or of course we also have to check the y the y coordinates so self dot hat dot y if this is greater than self dot h minus the block size or as last thing if self dot hat dot y is smaller than zero if this is the case then here we say we return true so we have a collision then we check if it hits itself we say if self dot hat in self dot snake and here we use uh, slicing so we start at position one and go all the way to the end because the first one is the head itself so be careful here because the, the head is always in the snake but so that's why we don't want to check the first position we only want to check all the other positions here so now if this is the case then again we return true and if nothing is the case then we return false so no collision and then we are fine so now um, we did this we checked if we have self collision and now what we have to do is place new food or finalize this move um, operation so what we want to do here is we say if self dot hat equals equals self dot food so if we catch the food then we increase the score so we say self dot score plus equals one and we want to place a new food so for this we already have this helper function and otherwise what we want to do is we want to um, so here we inserted a new um, a new block at the front but if we just move then we also have to remove it from the end and we can do this very simple so we say if else and then here 
self self dot snake dot pop and this is removing the last element of our snake so yeah this should be all that we need so again let's try it out so let's go to our terminal and run the game and we see um, is collision takes one positional argument but two were given so here of course I don't want to use self when I call this function so again let's run our scripts and now our we see our snake is running very fast so let's decrease the speed a little bit so let's say this is 20 and then let's check again so yeah you see this is a little bit slower and i can catch the food and then we see the new score in the upper left and then if i let's test the boundary so now we are we have lost and we see the final score so yeah this is working so yeah this is all the code i hope you learned a lot here and now know how to start with pygame so as a little homework if you want to improve this you can do two things you can make the speed dependent on the size of the snake so the bigger we get the faster should get the game and then you could also, um, like in Snake version 2, you could make it such that the, if we hit the boundary, then it should not be game over, but instead it should come, um, on the other, come out on the other side. So if we go to the top, then it should um, come out here at the bottom again. And if we go to the right, then it should come out at the left again. So this is one thing you can do and yeah, let me know if you enjoyed this tutorial and if so, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel and then I hope to see you in the next video. So in the next video, as I said, we are going to implement an AI for this. So this is super interesting and I hope that you will stick with me. So see you then.